see the nice toffee apple. You don't see the rotten bit below the, you know, yes. below the coating. Yeah, um, yes. And it's not till you bite deep that at some point you'll start to see and taste the rottenness of it. Mm -hmm. And mm. you'll think, me, you don't want to eat this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I need to be away from this. <laughs> I've got, got another text here. And d just before I bring that out, I just mention because I think it's very similar to, to the text that, that I'm going to read out. Um, I was actually given a, uh, a book of, um, a book for girls, it's a small pink book, of spells. And it's actual spells that you can make. And it, it's, it's just like, you know, the girl's own annual, whatever. Um, and it, it's so obvious the way that it's written, it's aimed at young girls. Now, we have the same thing here. Um, this is Haida, good program. I am concerned that the children in America, and I think it's getting a bit beyond that, but certainly in America, are being targeted with the sale of pink Ouija boards mm. for eight-year-old girls. Uh, they are available on Amazon, so in, in, in reality accessible to anyone. They are made by Hasbro, uh, if, and you can uh, look at Ouija board pink and it will, will, will come up. Um, and th this seems to me that there's only one aim and one purpose of that. Now, an eight-year-old girl getting a Ouija board for Christmas, you know, what, a, what a potentially can happen with that? Potentially can be a disaster, you know, like Adrian said, his first experience, the glass flew off the table and it can open the door to poltergeist-type activities and, and demonic activities but but I think people are obviously searching because we are all spiritual beings we have spiritual hunger and if there's not much you know Christian teaching going about and there's there's that vacuum then then of course folks are going to be interested and want to pursue it so it's it's kind of again sharing with them and trying to gently you know steer them away from it and explain why not not just being condemning and just you know but actually explain explain a little bit more about what what it actually means and, and to question it a bit more before you just rush into it. I mean, should we be writing to the producers of the book, to the makers of the game, should we actually be writing them? And, and if so, if we, how should we communicate with them? What, what should we say? Because presumably they're in it because they want to sell it to make money. Um, what, what arguments can we bring to them that, that might have an effect. I think so, definitely. You know, the other day I even heard someone commenting on, on a certain situation and, that was happening in Britain and, and they were saying, you know, basically it's because Christians have sat back and done nothing, really. You know, God wants us to pray for his will. We, we have to pray, your will be done on earth as is in heaven. But we, we have to, you know, do our bit and be responsible and, and speak up for Christ and speak up for, you know, his, his, his Bible and, and things. And, and if we don't, we can't really complain if, if you know, things start um, getting really messed up. We, we should be writing to places, yeah, and I wouldn't exactly know off the top of my head what you would say, perhaps, <laughs> but perhaps you would give examples of a, of a lot yes. of ex-spiritualists. I mean, we know ex-witches, ex-wiccans, ex-reiki people, you know, a whole lot of different occultists. Who, who used to do all that stuff and they're now Christians mm. and they're now in Christian churches and they're even saying to people please don't buy your kids Ouija yes. boards and tarot cards but some folks don't listen to them mm. you know they don't realise if they were in the occult they used to be a witch they used to be a Satanist they're telling me don't do it I think I should listen to them yeah. <laughs> you know they've yes. been there and yeah. Be because that uh, I mean, uh, you didn't have a pink Ouija ball for girls, I trust, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, that is exactly what you were saying, Adrian. You were nine years old, mm -hmm. you were messing around with this Ouija ball because you yeah. thought it was a game, and suddenly you saw there was something more. And that led you down a path yeah. um, away from God, away from that which was right, which took you quite a number of years to get back again from. Well, <laughs> nearly 30 years, yes. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not... Yeah, just don't get involved with them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the strange thing is, even a lot of mediums and spiritualists think that Ouija boards are wrong and that they're evil. Yes, I've, I've heard this. I, I mean, I, you know, in talking with witches and that and, 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 and people, and by the way, I get on well with most of them, you know, yeah. but, but they would often say to me, no, I would not have anything to do with the Ouija board. It, 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 that in itself is, is wrong. And, I always find that strange, I suppose, because for me, I can quite easily put 
them all together. But as we, you know, shown from what you both said, you don't necessarily put them all together. You, you've got levels of, 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 of the supernatural realm, haven't you? Yeah, that's, that's a good way of putting it, yeah. yeah. The levels. Yeah. Um, hey, we're, we're, we're coming near to the end. We've got all sorts of things still to go on. But, um, uh, Laura, one, one of the things I wanted you to do, I mean, certainly since you were here last and we chatted to you, I, I mean, I, I think you've been seeing God moving and, and working in your life. It, it share some encouragement of what God's been doing. Yeah, really, um, for any spiritualists as well that, that, that are maybe watching, some, some of the things might kind of help them question their own beliefs a little bit. Um, for example, over the last year or two, there's been a couple of times where the Lord's um, led me to help people who have got poltergeist-type demons in their house um, that have needed to be cleansed in Jesus' name and your friend Michael Cummings, the, the mm. pastor in London, he kindly helped me out with that over the telephone, you know, he phoned up to a lady's house in Glasgow, for example, and she she was a Christian um, but the house was um, her mother's house that she was living in and her mother had been into spiritualism and apparently they'd had um, demonic stuff going on in their house for 30 years right. on a regular basis, poltergeist type activities but also their what they thought was their family what they thought was their relatives um, and spiritualists know what I mean by that you can they're talking to you they look yeah. like the person so of course you believe it 30 years of this but it started to get worse the poltergeist side had got worse um, you know and, and basically what she said to me as well was that, that the spirits were impersonating the living so she might have had some family in for dinner and then they all left and the spirits in the next room were, were talking in the same voices, exactly like the family that were just in, talking about their private lives, exactly well able to impersonate. And I say, well, if, if they're so able to impersonate the living, why can't you consider that they're impersonating the dead as well? So anyway, Michael phoned and, and over the, the, the phone, he, he prayed and, and then cast those spirits out in Jesus' name. And t ten months later, she told me her house was still clear she'd never had trouble since whereas it had been a regular mm. a regular basis so that uh, it's not nice talking about these things I know that and we don't want to glorify Satan and I'm not trying to do that at all but yeah. we really try to show elevate Christ and, and, and show his power over his name is above every name and that Christ had the victory in that woman's house where she'd suffered for 30 yeah. years and, from and, that you and know. that's the interesting thing because if these things were from Christ they couldn't have been cast out in Christ's name. I mean, the Bible actually clearly teaches that, that, you know, he can't be divided. Yeah. Um, and, and, and therefore, the very fact that they were cast out in mm -hmm. Jesus' name mm -hmm. shows that they come from a totally different spiritual root mm -hmm. and not one that is, is, is for Christ in any way. Exactly, yeah. Um, another situation, it was about a year ago, and um, I was asked to go and share in a church of Scotland near Edinburgh. So I went along there and, and there was quite a lot of Christians came, but there was also 20 spiritualists came and two sorcerers and they listened to my testimony. Um, and at the